Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blog. My name is Todd Muirhead, and today I'm going to be talking with one of our cloud architects, Mr. Bob Goldsand. Bob, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hey, Todd. Um, I am a staff multi-cloud architect. I've been with VMware roughly a little over 13 years now. I work in the uh, Strategic Ecosystems and Industry Solutions Group. It's a mouthful. And uh, we've worked quite a bit on uh, traditional applications and performance or on, on enterprise applications. Yeah, and so Bob, you and I have done a lot of uh, different projects over the years, of course. Um, and I know that you're, uh, you've got a lot of uh, really interesting perspective on this uh, multi-cloud world. Yeah, absolutely. And you're focusing on enterprise apps and traditional apps. That's that's the space that we work together in. And, and that's where I come from as a multi-cloud architect. When you think about it, our, our platform really, you know, we were multi-cloud before multi-cloud had a name. Because, you know, when you're creating an application or, or database virtual machine, they're not bound to any physical server, uh, cluster, data center, or even physical location. You know, with, with live migration, customers can migrate VMs anywhere via our common management plane and, and leverage tools like distributed resource scheduler to do workload management. You know, plus VMware delivers multi-site application availability and mo mobility with uh, Site Recovery Manager, or customers can achieve workload resil resiliency by enabling VMware high availability so, you know, these are just some of the fundamental capabilities of, of the vSphere platform. And, you know, to me, the cloud is essentially our heritage and why we are the market leader in virtualization. And while I don't want to characterize the cloud as just a destination, our platform, you know, seems, seems like the foundations of, of multi-cloud to me. So, yeah, so that's really interesting. I, I like how on the side you have uh, Oracle Cloud, SAP Cloud, Microsoft Cloud, now, why exactly would it be that the customers would, would set up, even in their on-prem environment, these different clouds? If we talk about performance and licensing as examples, like we typically do when we work together, you know, in our core best practices for production applications, um, you know, we guide that you shouldn't overcommit resources like memory or, or CPU. You know, for this reason, you may want to isolate certain VMs to their own cluster or, or you know, resource cloud. You know, and, and remember, we were the guys way back when who worked with the production, the product teams to introduce affinity and anti-affinity rules uh, within DRS. So uh, with affinity and anti-affinity rules, you can restrict the movement of, say, an Oracle uh, database to a subset of hosts. This way, you're not running Oracle on unlicensed host. We're, we're kind of creating these clouds within clouds and we still maintain the workload uh, mobility. So, you know, as far back as I can remember, we have been practicing, you know, right cloud, right, right workload and, you know, have the capabilities of architecting multi-site solutions through hybridization. And again, these are the characteristics necessary when architecting a multi-cloud solution. So when you look at it, for our customers, the cloud or multi-cloud is, is really just an extension of, vSphere, of, of the vSphere platform. You know, migrations to the cloud via our HDX product essentially leverages VMware, the VMware infrastructure and mature tool sets like vMotion, but in a much more sophisticated manner. You have several mig migration options like vMotion, cold or bulk migration. What's huge here is, you know, since these migrations are, are bi-directional, um, this is a, a, a big hedge against lock-in. This puts the customer or the, or the business back in control. So for instance, if a high, hypervisor changes their coerced licensing or support models, the business can migrate back on-prem or to another VMware-based cloud with minimal to no refactoring. Uh, this is a huge benefit. Again, it's just an extension of the VMware private cloud. Yeah, so this is really cool. And it highlights how our platform being vSphere running both uh, on-prem and then also uh, in the public cloud on the various partners that you have here allows you to really uh, move your workloads where it makes the most sense. 
you know, this is an interesting statement that no one cloud solves every challenge for everyone. And it, and it kind of forces me to think of it from an architectural perspective. With our platform, you have the, you can certainly distribute your applications across many or all of the VMware based hyperscalers, but what does that do to latency? What does that do to performance? And, you know, the reality is that we live in a heterogeneous world. So not only do applications rely on other applications, businesses processes also rely upon multiple applications. So when these applications are distributed across multiple clouds, you must consider latency. And you must ask the question, you know, can, my, can I meet my enterprise SLAs? And, and again, what does it do to the overall performance, whether it be the application or the, or the business process at large? So bottom line is, you know, any migration of, of, of consequence does require an architect to examine the east-west traffic, as well as application and business processes dependencies, which is, you know, a great use case for, you know, vRealize Network Insight, which we have worked together on to, uh, to accelerate our application performance. So, Bob, you mentioned uh, best fit. Exactly uh, what do you mean by that? Since our multi-cloud solutions have direct access to hyperscaler native services, uh, this is an architectural consideration as, as well. A hyperscaler may have excellent AI services or excellent analytic services or, or excellent uh, database services. What do you choose? Do you choose the cloud that has the best of breed or, or do you choose a hyperscaler that meets all of the requirements? You know, when you look at a, a traditional data center, you know, we talked about service sprawl in, in the old days, right sizing VMs and workloads and consolidation and, and placement. You know, since we do have that, the, the mobility aspects of our platform, you know, cloud sprawl can be minimized if you stick with the above heuristics and, and do the work ahead of time. The reality is workloads and the business is, is, are dynamic. So you can burst to a cloud, add more clouds to your multi-cloud cluster, or consolidate workloads to, to fewer clouds, all without tenacity costs associated with, with refactoring. It's very important to note that, you know, still are, are about 80% of the enterprise applications still run on premise. And in fact, I was reading an article recently by the CEO of AWS. You know, he said that the cloud market is still in its early days and only a relatively small percentage of enterprise workloads are currently in the cloud. A lot of people don't realize that, that most enterprise apps are still on-prem. And this is a huge opportunity to continue to support these, these apps, uh, both on-prem and then potentially in the cloud using vSphere across all the different uh, Cloud vendors. You know, over, over the years, I've worked with you and your and, and your colleagues in performance engineering to virtualize many challenging workloads on vSphere. Yeah, I mean, the performance has been a key aspect of what what you and I have worked on uh, specifically. And like you like you said, we we put a lot of work in over the years to get vSphere to be a best in class for supporting all of these enterprise applications, things like Oracle and SQL Server, SAP HANA, and so even when you're running it on print, which we're running on prem like we have for a long time now. And also when you move into the cloud, it's still vSphere and those optimizations are still present. So you're still getting, um, you know, that, that best in class performance for running these applications. It really is about the performance um, of the virtualized applications. If we get back to our best practices, you know, throughout the years we've, we've identified, I think, you know, roughly 150 or so tunables or optimizations for uh, deploying these enterprise app, app applications and workloads. So the question is, you know, do these tunables exist in the destination native cloud? If not, are there equivalent optimization or is there a subset of these available at the, at the, on, the, on the native cloud? You know, and of course the million dollar question is, and will I be able to, to meet my, my SL, SLA? So it's, it's, it's a non-trivial exercise, but since, you're moving from a light platform to a light platform from from uh, private to public. It makes it much, much, much easier. Yeah. So this last slide uh, is is actually a good summary of of some of the the strong performance uh, advantages uh, for using vSphere for these for these uh, enterprise applications. And 
a lot of people might think that we've kind of stood still with ESX and vSphere uh, development over the last however many years, but in reality, we've continued to do lots of really uh, great work on the performance side to continue to enhance our platform. Um, this, this has got some specific uh, examples called out, um, you know, continuing to increase the size of, of monster virtual machines to support you know, even the largest um, database installations out there. Um, and, and that that involves not just you know increasing the number of CPUs that are support, but a lot of work in our scheduling and monitor layers in order to be able to to make it work efficiently and properly. Um, we've also made some additional changes specifically around the AMD, the new AMD Epic series of processors. Uh, the architecture of those chips is different uh, from the Intel ones enough that we were able to get some additional optimizations by um, optimizing our scheduler to to account for those better. And, and there's uh, white papers out there, which, which I'll include a link to. But we also continue to, continue to enhance vMotion, uh, the addition of support for vGPUs. Uh, virtual NUMA has also been enhanced again uh, with an uh, 8.0 with some additional um, scheduling optimization. So the, the point is that we're continuing to keep vSphere up to date uh, with all the latest hardware and taking advantage of it so that we can continue to get really the best performance out there. Yeah, I mean, this really highlights, uh, you know, everything that makes us enterprise ready and, and, and the ability to run on, on any cloud. For me, the takeaway from this talk is that um, vSphere is a high performance platform for enterprise applications, not just on prem, but also in the cloud as well, because it is a common platform. Absolutely. All right, Bob, well, thanks for stopping by and uh, having this, uh, I think very interesting conversation. I'd like to thank everybody for listening. Please check out the other Extreme Performance Series video blogs as well. Thanks everybody. Thanks Todd, take care.